Hello, I'm Jill at Ingvid, and today we have a lesson on personal pronouns, uh, particularly on they, them, and their, which are the plural, third person plural. Uh, so why do they why are they different? Well, subject, object, possessive. So if they are the subject, you, you say they, they are here. If they're the object, I see them. Okay. And then they came in their car, possessive. So that's those. So that, that's third person plural. Um, and then just to look at the third person singular, because this is also relevant to the lesson. Uh, we have masculine, feminine, and neuter for the, in the singular, which we don't have in the plural. These could be masculine or feminine or neuter to do with a thing rather than a person or with an animal. Um, but in the singular, we have masculine, feminine, neuter. So he, him, his. Again, uh, he is here. I see him. Uh, he came in his car, okay, and she, her, hers. And then for the neuter, it, it, and its for subject, object, possessive again. Um, but there's a situation where um, sometimes the, the plural pronouns um, are used... Uh, in a singular sense. Um, and that happens when you don't actually know whether, if it's a person, you don't know whether they're male or female. Okay. So, for example, if someone's talking about a, a, a talk that they went to and they say the speaker was so inspiring, a uh, speaker, that could be a male, male or female. We don't know. So somebody might reply, oh, really? What did... So they can't say, what did he talk about? And they can't say, what did she talk about either? Because they don't know if it was a man or a woman at this point. So uh, often in conversation, um, people would say, what did they? What did they talk about? Okay, because that's not specific to ma masculine or feminine. It's non-gender specific. So it's, um, it's an easy way of um, asking the question or referring to that speaker when you don't know if they're male or female. You don't really want to say, oh, was it a man or a woman? before you can ask the question, what did he talk about or what did she talk about? You would you want to immediately ask the question, oh, what did they talk about? So that's when you would use the plural, they, when you know it's only one person, one speaker, um, because you just don't know who, who they are. Um, there's another thing that's done in writing when you're trying to be non-gender specific and you want to include both genders. You want to use male and female uh, if you're talking about uh, maybe a teacher teaching in a classroom and uh, say, say something general like uh, instead of saying he or she, which people have also done, in the past, um, you know, the teacher um, in the classroom, uh, he or she needs to uh, show that they understand their subject very well, otherwise the, the, the students won't take them seriously. So you can either say he or she should appear knowledgeable about their subject, um, but there's in writing there's a way of putting s stroke he so that it can mean he 
or she in that way, and it's quicker um, and easier. It takes up less space, especially if you keep saying the same sorts of things with the same construction and you're constantly trying to say he or she. Uh, you can just, if it's in writing, you can put S stroke he, S stroke he, because people are reading it silently usually, so they don't have to say it. So that's another option. And then there's another thing that's happened quite recently. Um, um, some organisations, uh, I think especially charities um, um, and uh, NGOs, um, when people send emails, they put their name at the bottom and probably their job title. And then they've started putting how they want to be referred to. So um, they could put uh, Jane Smith, um, volunteer manager, um, she stroke her because Jane is a woman's name. So, I mean, you'd think, well, why? Because, I mean, if she's a woman, I would refer to her as she or her uh, anyway. Um, so sometimes it, it's obvious. And then a male, somebody writing, John, John Smith, um, volunteer director, um, he, he stroke him. And you think, well, he's a man, so of course I'll say he or him. Um, but some people now, uh, they don't want to be referred to with a gendered pronoun. They don't want people to use a male pronoun or a female pronoun when referring to them. And so they might put under their name, they stroke them, because they, as a person... Um, oh, how's John today? Oh, um, they are quite busy. I suppose that's how you would say it. Um, or how's John today? Oh, I haven't seen them yet this morning. I guess that's how you would say it. I've never actually heard this put into practice so far. I've only seen it written on emails and usually I've seen the obvious one anyway, he stroke him, she stroke her. I don't know if I've ever seen the plural version, but um, it's something to look out for. And I don't know how, if that appears at all in other languages other than English, but it's a, a new trend in the English language. Uh, so that's something to look out for. Um, so... Uh, it's an interesting development. So, okay, so if you don't know the gender, that going back to the, the older um, way of doing this, um, you, you use they. What did they talk about? And some people don't like this. Some people think it's ungrammatical because they is plural and the speaker is singular. Some people don't like the sound of it. It doesn't sound good to them. That's usually older generation um, people. But, you know, I, I think it's there's no other option, really, other, other than say, oh, what did the speaker talk about? Um, it's a bit, you know, not, not so elegant. Okay. And then similarly, there's someone at the door. What mm -mm, want? Well, do you say what do mm, want or what does mm, want? So perhaps you can work out what would you put here? If you don't know, there's someone at the door, male or female, we don't know. So how would you put that? And you've got to get the right form of the auxiliary verb here as well as the alternative to he or she. Um, so it's obviously, again, what mm, they want. But if it's they, which is supposedly plural in, in grammatical terms, what do they want? 
uh, if it was he, it was what does he want? So that would be what does he want or what does she want? So you have to sometimes change the form of the verb as well to go with the plural they. There's someone at the door. What do they want? Because you're not going to say, oh, are they male or female? Oh, all right then. So what does she want? <laughs> so you wouldn't take time to do that. Right. And then here's another. My new neighbour is coming to our party. Uh, then someone replies, great. When did mm, move in the new neighbour? Moving in next door. When did well, again, it's they, isn't it? When did they move in? But then once you know, you could say, oh, when did he move in? When did she move in? And there's no change to the verb form here because it's a more straightforward. Um, and it's the past form of do. So did stays the same. Um, okay. Right. And then finally, another, my cousin is visiting me next week. I've deliberately chosen cousin because a cousin can be male or female. If I'd said my niece or my nephew, you immediately get the gender. So a sister, brother, I thought, no, I can't use that one. What sort of family member um, has the same word for both genders? Ah, cousin, right. My cousin is visiting me next week. That's nice. What's mm, name? So we've got to be non-gender specific. So we've got, but this time it's the possessive form, isn't it? So we've got to go for their, what's their name? Okay, you can't say what's his name, what's her name, because you don't know male or female. So what's their name? And it sounds okay because it's done in conversation. Uh, people have spoken like this for, for years now and it's just accepted, um, even though some people uh, don't like it. Uh, there's really no alternative. Um, so I hope that's been a helpful explanation and uh, if you'd like to do a quiz to test your knowledge, uh, go to the website, ingvid.com, and do the quiz. And uh, thanks for watching, and hope to see you again soon. Okay, bye for now.